So I know you guys are gonna have a field day with this video. Honestly, I'm already really embarrassed for myself because I know where this is going. But sometimes I just have thoughts like this and they're not grounded in anything concrete, but they capture a certain dreamlike sense of something, like a super rough approximation of a fact or a compass that's sort of pointing in a direction, but you don't exactly know what the end point is. And I've never made a video that just expressed my raw thoughts like this before because I know how likely they are to get shut down with science as soon as somebody who knows more than me about all of these topics listens to this. But I'm gonna do it anyway, so feel free to tune out now if you wanna stay in the realm of realism. So the first part of this thought is we have to think about the topology of our universe, being in three dimensions with one of time. Our topology is the properties of space that are conserved under continuous deformations. So like Plato, you can stretch it, bend it, twist it, but you can't like poke a hole in it or rip it apart. And right now, cosmologists don't exactly know how to describe the universe. Totally possible that our universe is straight Euclidean, like a flat piece of paper, or it's sort of saddle shaped, depending on the densities, which they can't determine yet. But if both of these models in theory, if you took a rocket ship and went in one direction, it's infinite, right? The universe is infinite. You never cycle back around. But it's also very possible that we have a spherical universe or it's closed in some sort of other mechanism where if you actually went in one direction, you do eventually come back to the point that you started. So there's no edge. It might look something like a Mobius strip where you can go back and forth on that sort of figure eight thing on both sides without ever having to cross the plane or just like a straight gigantic basketball that's so big that we can't even tell that it's curved from this angle. But first, start with the idea that there is a topology to the universe. Now it's gonna get a little weird. We're starting to leave planet Earth here, but imagine a big neural network that's trained on language, a large language model like ChatGPT. And remember that it started out as just a bunch of parameters with random chaotic weights. And then each time you put information in, there was an error rate and then some kind of algorithm went back in, something like backpropagation to fix and tune them all so it was better the next time. And that was constantly adjusting this big, probably a trillion parameter ball of network, right? But imagine being inside this thing, what you would have is a whole bunch of words, or maybe you could think of them as tokens or just little data points that roughly correspond to every word in the English language, and they're getting moved around all the time. Some are moving closer and they're clumping together and some are being pulled apart. Now imagine that you're just one of these data points. Let's pick the word, it could be any word in English, but let's just pick the word king, for example. You dive into the network, you go find this little, basically planet, this little piece of data that's sitting in this multidimensional space that's called the word king. Now, if you could sit on that thing somehow, and look around at all of the other data points, all of the other English words, what would you see? What you would see sitting on the king token would be near to you is the queen token because semantically in our world, king and queen have a lot of similarities to them. But if you took a telescope and looked far away, you might see a color like the word red. And then you would also notice that near the word red, you would also see blue and yellow and the other colors. The colors, are a little bit separated, but they're also clustered together comparatively to all of the other English words that are in this universe. And if we imagine this little king token is somewhat intelligent in itself, and it's thinking to itself, what would explain why those colors are clustered over here, but a word like queen is closer to me? It might actually discover mathematics. I mean, mathematics is just a descriptor. It accurately describes what's going to happen in the future. Isaac Newton's laws of physics accurately predict what will happen. If they didn't predict it, they wouldn't be math. So in that sense, I think math is discovered from the actual nature of the universe that it's coming from. So now think topology, the arrangement of the data, and now let's also think about the multi-dimensional space that they sit in. So in our big human world, we need four pieces of data to accurately describe where an object is in the universe. First, you would need to know the time, like right now I'm standing right here, but I won't be in an hour. Right? Then you need the equivalent of forward, back, upright, left, down, the three dimensions of space. But because a computer doesn't need to actually visualize the three-dimensional space, but it can actually just work directly off the list doing the mathematics, you can simply make that list longer and longer. And there is still a method to how you could measure something in a multi-dimensional space. So it really is like a multi-dimensional space inside of a neural network. Because since the beginning of life, we've been evolving in a three-dimensional space. The brain isn't capable of visualizing it the same way. But it's important to recognize that if the list just gets longer and longer, you can have different types of distances. There is different things that are perpendicular to different things. Words like adjacent and orthogonal, those actually work. They just become much more nuanced. But computers don't have a problem with this. Matrices, tensors, and computation, no problem. And that's part of the magic that makes ChatGPT work. It's those additional dimensions that mean you can move these words around in such stunning ways that doing next word token prediction can actually write amazing poetry. So now what if, just, just don't, just let me say it. What if 
by coincidence, inside of a giant neural network with trillion parameters, there's a small little corner where there's three dimensions that feel the way they do in our reality and life actually comes to be in existence in just that little corner. What if life formed inside of a giant neural network in a place where everything that from the observer, it felt like three dimensional space. I like, it could look like anything. It doesn't have to be biological, but try to remember that DNA and RNA, that's information replicating through evolution. And like in any form that that looks like, in theory, it can keep building on itself until it becomes more and more complicated, eventually becoming potentially conscious or self-aware of itself. It can wonder things. It can find out that the scientific method already exists in the universe and utilize that to learn more about the universe. And so yes, what I'm saying here is what if we or some other kind of life form intelligence, whatever you want to call it, exists in a small little three dimensional space inside of a trillion or much, much, much bigger neural network that some other super alien species is actually running right now. So if you're still here and whether you believe it or think it's unlikely, it doesn't matter. But if you just accept the premise for this thought experiment, we or some other kind of life is actually just sitting in this little three dimensional corner of this ever evolving and learning gigantic neural network for some alien like God or whatever. And you might find that just like us, that you might feel like everything's Newtonian and three dimensional, but as you probe smaller and smaller and smaller, you notice something kind of like quantum mechanics. This is why life's been around for billions of years and never found quantum mechanics until now, because you really don't need it. It just has nothing to do with whether you can predict how a spear is going to be thrown at an animal. But sufficiently complex life is probably built up of smaller particles, because networked complexity is part of what makes intelligence in the first place. So intelligence probably can't evolve at the size of a quark or a proton or whatever. It needs a Conway's game of life kind of thing to just sort of maybe be patterned, but come together in a much more complex way. But it seems like if we lived in a small three-dimensional slice of a giant neural network, then quantum mechanics might be what we find when we probe small. We actually do in our life. And then it made me think of what cosmologists call the many worlds hypothesis. And if we are the equivalent of a sufficiently complex little data point inside of a big neural network, what I understand about string theory, that concept of a string that can kind of twist and bend, but it's actually one thing, but it can be bent up and twisted into a multi-dimensional space, but it's curled up really, really small where we can barely see it. That also kind of seems like what's happening is the other dimensions of this big neural network, it's just traveling between those and we're just a part of a bigger piece of data and that's what's happened. And then think about how the scientists are describing how quantum computers work. I've heard the metaphor that like a maze, it can go down every path at the same time and then you can just sort of pluck out the one that solves the problem. That sounds like being inside of a neural network and you harness the ability for some data to take advantage of all those other dimensions that you're physically not in. And then I was thinking about what if prime number patterns are more of a description of how this universe in these three dimensions is actually containing all of the data that it's learning. And that got me thinking, what about if prime numbers were actually a description of the shape of the neural network and the little corner that we live in? Or what if the concept of entropy is the system constantly learning? What if entropy is what it feels like to be stuck in this specific little corner of this multi-dimensional space as it performs something like backpropagation? Huh? A lot of questions there, very few answers. But what I will say is this is not simulation theory. I know it kind of sounds like it, but simulation theory would be more like this super intelligence created a video game to actually play out some scenario. And like Elon Musk says, if that's the case, we should be very interesting to them so they don't want to turn off the simulation, which implies these intelligent gods kind of set something in motion and we're seeing it play out, which could be possible also. I mean, simulation theory, I've got other videos on that. But I'm just saying this is different because it's truly accidental. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's simply the result of having a system tuning closer and closer to some kind of an objective function and the system being vastly complicated with trillions, quadrillions, like, who knows how many parameters. Our universe is just a result of some larger, higher dimensional space learning something with all these dimensional spaces that make sense that some of them will be highly stable like ours. And I've also recently been influenced by Stephen Wolfram's idea of the Ruliad. Feels like it kind of fits into all of this. He describes the Ruliad as the entire universe of all possible computations. And he puts in perspective that what we should think about our universe as is basically a giant network. He imagines these individual, basically, dots of space, he called like atoms of space, you could call them. And they're all connected on this giant graph and the graph is computing. It has rules that it uses to update its sequences and the patterns in those rules 
are what give our universe stability. And everything we describe has to be described from the observer who's inside of a system where these things are updating into the point where it feels stable to us. Graph theory, systems theory, neural networks, the architectures are all kind of kind of got the same thing from different angles. And he says from this model of the universe, this network graph theory model, he can unite both relativity and quantum mechanics, the big mystery. I mean, he's working on it and that could be the grand unifier would be a system like this. So yeah, I can't wait to hear your comments below. I rarely film this late. You can see that it's 2 a.m. right now. Bruh. And honestly, I doubt this video is gonna get many views. But if you're a fan of this channel and you're gonna ever make a comment, I would love it if you make this video the one. Tear me apart if you think it's interesting. If there's other things I should read, build on this, let me know about them. I'm just excited to talk with you in the comment section for my pure pleasure. And while you're there, help me get to my next goal, 7,000 subscribers. Topology that subscribe button.